El Bueno y el Malo en Especial and the Indie Lounge. I am Bruce Trujillo from Especial, joined by Hermanos Gutierrez. Guys, welcome to Indie 1023. Welcome to the Indie Lounge. Thank hey, you so much. Thanks for so having much us. for having us. Just released their fifth studio album, El Bueno y el Malo, on Easy Eye Sound Records. Of course, we know Dan Arbach from that, and we'll get to all of that. Mm -hmm. But first, uh, let's talk about you guys. Introduce yourselves. Let's, uh, let's talk about maybe when you first started performing music as children. You guys are brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Alejandro and Esteban. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about maybe your uh, grandfather's influence on your music growing up. Mm -hmm. I'm Esteban. This is my brother Alejandro. We are Los Hermanos Gutierrez. And yeah, we started to play together six years ago. And um, our father is Swiss, our mother is from Ecuador, and our grandfather, Luis Alfredo Gutierrez, he was a big influence because he was the one who showed us um, Julio Jaramillo. He's a singer from the 50s. And wow, these songs that he s sang, was they were so incredible, touching. And he was the one who showed us that music can touch your heart and your soul. And it's okay to feel that. So that was a big influence. And we always were like, yeah, if we want to create and do music, we always want to touch the hearts, the souls. Mm. When you were listening to this, maybe as children, when did you when did you first start playing guitar separately, or did was the I started playing when I was sixteen years old. That was um, right when my brother went for a year to Ecuador. Um, he wanted to have a break, and um, he inspired me to play the guitar. So I started um, watching YouTube tutorials, just simple um, riffs and chords. That's how I started um, playing the guitar. And I started when I was about eight, nine years old, but I started with the classical guitar. I love to play the milonga from Argentina, the finger picking style. And I always love to play this, this kind of music. So that's, that's also a big influence for, for my style, how I play the guitar. Yeah, you can hear that in there. So you've got this inspiration from the 50s. Mm -hmm. You've got the classical guitar. Mm -hmm. You can hear some different influences from throughout Latin America. But mm -hmm. what are some other inspirations that you both have that maybe aren't as obvious when you're listening to the music? I think um, we have individual um, inspirations. My brother comes from more the salsa perspective. He used to collect salsa records. And that was more into soul music from the 50s, 60s. But even also like um, watching movies, um, the one from Alejandro Iñárritu, the Mexican director who worked with um, Gustavo Santaloaya. Then also Ennio Morricone worked with um, Sergio Leone. So I think there's a bunch of people who inspired us um, for what we're doing right now in the present moment. Those are those spaghetti westerns, and you definitely get that feel like you're maybe riding through the desert. Uh, this is your fifth studio album, mm. El Bueno y el Malo, and your first album was actually recorded kind of together just for each other and for the family, mm. Ocho Años. Yeah. Uh, talk about that one and how how that eventually grew into where we're at today, five studio albums in and recording mm. with Dan Arbach. Um, it's called Ocho Años because we have a time, uh, an age difference of uh, Ocho Años, eight years. So I'm the older brother and he moved away when he started to study in Zurich. So we missed each other and uh, one day he called me and said, why don't you come? It's maybe one and a, one and a half hour drive. And then uh, he said, yeah, bring your guitar. Maybe we can play together. And so he showed me an idea that he had and he said, something is missing. Maybe you can just add what you think is missing. And we were playing and it, it sounded and it felt great. And at this moment, his roommate came into the room and said, wow, from which band is this? And we were saying like, yeah, it, we're jamming and this is our music. And he was the one that said, you have to create a band, you have to record an album. And he was the one at that moment that gave us the idea, there's something and you should really use this energy right now. Amazing. And so you shared that with family. Mm -hmm. What was the next step after kind of getting it out to your immediate circle, um, the next album in, in 2018? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just about uh, writing music together and reconnecting through music. And we came up with, an, with ideas and it was a very natural process. And it was all fun at that, that moment. <clears throat> and it was certainly f to make a vinyl record because we're huge fans of vinyls. <clears throat> so that felt great. And, and then from then on, it kept spreading. 
I think the pandemic was very important for us where people maybe stay more at home and it was more inwards. Um, and that was a crucial moment for us to travel around the world without being able to travel, you know. Mm. So I think looking back, that was a, an important moment. And now we're here. I mean, we're, we recorded in Nashville. Dan found us and it's just an amazing moment and we're grateful for it. Absolutely. And we'll talk about this new album, Recording with Dan, and even creating a song with Dan mm -hmm. Antres Hermanos in the new album. Uh, I do want to ask you about the conversation that you have playing guitar with each other. As brothers, you grew up together, obviously, but mm -hmm. what is it about now playing guitar together and creating music? What 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 has that done with your relationship? I mean, some people it maybe makes it fall apart, but it seems like it's working here. Uh, so talk about creating music together specifically and that conversation that happens musically. Well, yeah, it's um, it's fun, but it's also a lot of work. But at the end, it's beautiful to share the stages and all these journeys with my brother, you know. And uh, it was always our dream and our passion to create music. And uh, at the beginning, we, we did it for ourselves, you know. The goal was to have our own LP for us. And now having a, a lot of listeners and fans who can connect to us through our music, it's beautiful. So this is a gift that we have, and we're so grateful to be on this journey with everybody now. We're going to get to our next song, Thunderbird, mm -hmm. off of the album El Bueno y El Malo. Talk a little bit about this one. What Set the, the scene for maybe where mm -hmm. we would hear this one mm -hmm. out in the world. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. I know how we came up with the song. Um, it was based on an idea that I've written in, during the pandemic, and it was always there, but it was never like, all right, this is it. So before um, going to Nashville a few weeks, I knew I had to go back and look for that melody and try to work on it more. And I had it in one moment and I shared it with my brother. And that was another magic moment between us. I think the last question you were asking, this relationship, something is really going on which is not about communication it's just happening through music and then that's the yeah the most powerful moment then where we can connect and that was something about it and i think you can hear it in in that song thunderbird it's really powerful and it stands for the logo that we have it's the thunderbird with hermanos gutierrez mm. thunderbird in especial de los hermanos gutierrez
Hermanos Gutierrez, en especial en The Indie Lounge, uh, Thunderbird from the new album, El Bueno y el Malo, uh, recorded with Dan Arbach at Easy Eye Sound Records. Uh, talk to me about getting that phone call. Uh, Dan Arbach of the Black Keys, of course, and several other projects, uh, head of Easy Eye Sound. What what was that initial conversation like with Dan? Um, well, we let me tell you how the how Dan got to know our music. Please. This is cool. Um, we have our management in Los Angeles, and our manager uh, knows Dan's manager. So our manager sent Dan's manager our first video ever, maybe six years ago that we recorded that in uh, Berlin, and then. Uh, Tom Osborne, who's the manager of, of Easy Eye Sound, uh, showed it Dan and Alan Parker because uh, b before their weekly um, meeting on Tuesdays. And then Dan, um, after 15 seconds, Dan closed the laptop and said, yeah, let's have a call to, with the boys. And that was it. And then maybe two weeks later, we had um, this first call with Dan. And yeah, after 15 minutes, it was clear that, yeah, that's it. We should work together and... Uh, yeah, let's do it. And it sounds like that was echoed when you guys got to the studio. Mm -hmm. um, I read that you walked in, you were kind of jamming, mm -hmm. kind of sound checking, mm -hmm. didn't realize he was recording, but mm -hmm. then he said, all right, let's take it from the top. Mm -hmm. And you all realized that it was uh, a good, a really good fit. He mm -hmm. spoke your language. He understood what you were doing. Uh, talk about working with somebody like that in the studio, a producer and mm -hmm. somebody who really understands what you're you're doing musically. Yeah, it was the first time that we ever worked with a producer. And so we were kind of nervous, to be honest, because you never know. It can be bad or good. But when we entered that studio, we instantly felt like very connected to the whole vibe and to Dan on a personal level because he was very respectful and he was never trying to impose his idea on, on the, our ideas. And yeah, like you're saying, the beginning was um, so funny because we were just jamming and like trying to um, be in, in the mood to record. And he just left the room and we realized, I think we're already recording. And he said, yeah, like, let's do it from the top again. And that was so cool because, yeah, we just used that track, that first um, version of El Buen El Malo. And that was it. That's what you hear on the record. Amazing. Mm. Uh, Dan is also featured on the album, On Tres Hermanos. Mm -hmm. And I love this because uh, for fans that have, of the Black Keys for a long time, you can go back to Rubber Factory and kind of hear that sound. So it's beautiful that he's able to just integrate within your sound. Talk about recording that song and maybe writing that song with him. What What is that going from producer role into now collaborator on a song? Uh, well, we had... Um the whole idea of the song, we had it ready, and he loved the idea. And there was one part on the bridge that he came up and said, "Hey guys, I listen. To, I have a melody. Maybe you can play this melody." And then he sang the, the melody, and we tried to play it in our style, but it didn't work. And then we said, "Why don't you play it?" And he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And then he also he played it like in in a one taker, and it's so cool. And he was also so happy and. Um, yeah, it's also for him super cool to to have this song written with us. I love that. Talk about the rest of the album, however. El Bueno y el Malo, again, fifth studio album out now on Easy Eye Sound Records. <clears throat> you hear it on a special almost weekly at this point. Uh, what were some highlights outside of, you know, recording a song with Dan or working with him? What was another highlight for each of you going into this record? I think it was connecting with Dan, um, on a level which I never thought it's it's possible. In our breaks that we had from recording, we were listening to tracks on um, vinyls, and there was one track he showed us. Um, it's called La Valiche from Los Destellos. It's like a Peruvian band. And he said, like, hey, guys, I got to show you a track. And we heard it. And it was so cool to feel like that we're listening to the same kind of music and that we're getting connected because of that track. I think that was my highlight um, because I knew we we're in, in good hands, if not in the best hands. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, I always uh, like that Dan um, opened his arms to his family, you know. He has so many nice people around him. Um, we're such a great team, everybody from the, the label, from, yeah, from the whole crew, and it's so cool. Um, two weeks ago, we went back to Nashville, and it was amazing to to see everybody and to... 
yeah, to be at the right place, it's it's amazing. We're so happy to be at Easy Eye Sound. That's wonderful. Well, you guys have one more for us, Pueblo Man. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit more about this one and we'll get into it. Pueblo Man um, has a special tuning. Um, I think I was inspired because of my lap steel that I use. I have open tunings. So um, luckily I found that tuning on the guitar, which is on a D chord. And I was messing around with it. And also like very similar to Thunderbird before going to Nashville. I just shared the idea with um, Esteban and he just came up with his melody. And again, there was uh, this brotherly connection, which you can hear through the music. And um, the name is actually inspired by a friend who's Native American, and he's from uh, Jemez Pueblo, New Mexico. And I visited his, his family, and it was exactly around the days where they do ditch work. And um, his father had a speech at his place, at his house with all the cousins. And he was just trying to um, share the importance of the culture of Native Americans and what ditch work means to them. And he came up with that strong word of the Pueblo man. You know, you're doing it because you're a Pueblo man. And I heard it and I was in that moment so, it was so mind blowing to see, or being part of that moment. And it actually felt right to name the track after this, um, yeah, experience. The, the Asequia work in New Mexico, yes. Um, and actually you made me remember one more question. Uh, your guitars? are obviously that this is what we're listening to talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about why you're playing the gresh and your lap steel uh what what brought you to these guitars and why are they your your weapon of choice so to speak i'm not a guitar nerd <laughs> i really like the color and um i checked some videos on youtube and there was one guy who played um sant and johnny on this guitar and then I knew that's the one. That's a, that easy. I, yeah, and I never played it, I bought it and I fell in love with the guitar. It's exactly my, the sound that I that I love and I was really lucky to find the guitar. I love and that. so yeah, that's it, short story. Super quick. Yeah, I found my lap steel online as well in a shop in Los Angeles and I was just um, blown away by the look of it. I mean, it's metal, it's chrome. So I just bought it and it's hit or miss, but um, I'm loving it. It's my instrument. And my guitar is an old silver tone from the 60s. Um, I found it in the store in Finland and uh, I just bought it and yeah, it sounds incredible. See, it's like all of it's just meant mm. to be. <laughs> all right, let's get to Pueblo Man on Especial and Indie 1023 with Hermanos Gutierrez. <laughs> Thank you. 